nurse practitioner today. Today I'm going to be doing a um, cardiovascular and peripheral assessment on you. Before I start anything, I just wanted to get your consent for uh, record this and to upload it on YouTube for my class. Okay. okay. So I'm going to start. I'm going to start by washing my hands and the first thing that we're going to start with the cardiovascular is very important that we have recordings of the blood pressure in when the patient is either supine or sitting up and uh, bueno, supine and sitting up uh, in both arms to uh, make comparisons and see if there's any changes when the patient is in different positions in the different arm. Uh, so that will be the first step before starting the examination. And now I'm gonna proceed, I'm gonna examine the patient. I'm gonna sit by your side, okay? Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna look is, I'm gonna look at the patient's neck. I'm gonna look and see if there are there any masses, any lesions, but especially in, for this examination is any uh, abnormal pulsations um, that will be considered like, um, I can see like a regular pulsation of the carotid artery, but nothing exaggerated. And the other thing I can look for is hematomas and he doesn't have any. Uh, now I'm gonna proceed and I'm gonna palpate Oh, and I mean, I'm gonna do the uh, jugular vein pressure. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is turn to your left side, please. And I'm gonna take my measuring tape and my light and the flat surface. And what I'm gonna do right here is I'm gonna look at the point where the highest point above the sternal notch that has a pulsation and that will be identified as the jugular. And I'm going to place the, which is right about here. I'm gonna place my flat surface right there. And I'm gonna be measuring with my measuring tape from the top of the sternal notch to where the flat surface ends. And it's about one and a half centimeter, uh, which is a normal finding. Uh, normal finding is anything, um, below three cent centimeters. Um, and that will be the neck, the uvular. And now I'm gonna leave this behind and I'm gonna ask you to come back and look at me. Um, I'm gonna be checking the carotid uh, pulse on both sides. Uh, it's not gonna be done at the same time. It's gonna be one at a time. So I'm gonna check on this side and Upon checking, uh, the pulse is three plus, and there are no thrills noted. And then I'm gonna proceed. I'm gonna check the other carotid, and it's three plus, and there are no thrills noted. Um, now I'm gonna put my stethoscope on, and I'm gonna check with my um, stethoscope with both the diaphragm and the bell. I'm gonna listen to the carotid. And I'm gonna turn it and listen with the bell. And the other side. And with this, I'm not listening to any bruits, which is normal. I just hear the regular pulsations. Um, now I'm gonna, I am done with the neck and I am going to proceed with the chest. Uh, so I'm gonna uncover you a little bit from the chest area and the abdomen. Um, so first, checking the chest, of course, I am going to see if there are any masses, any rashes, any lesions, which in this case, there's none. Uh, but import, it is important to check for um, any abnormal pulsations, um, which will be on the uh, per Precordial, pre um, which is uh, the aortic area, there's no, no pulsations there. And then 
the pulmonic area, there are no positions there, the air spoon, and then down to the trace cuspid, and finally to the mitral, and there is no pulsations uh, noted. Uh, the other thing that I can inspect is the apical impulse, which should be noted midclavicular to the fifth intercostal space, and I don't see an impulse, I mean, or any pulsation. It is normal to see it, but in this case, when the patient has like a increased mass or increased um, muscle mass or increased adipose tissue, then sometimes we're not able to see the apical impulse. In this case, it's not noted. Um, the other thing I can look at the chest is, um, are there any chest abnormalities like a pectus excavatum and a pectus carinatum? which is his pigeon or uh, barrel chest, and he doesn't have any of that. No external abnormalities are noted either. Uh, so next I'm going to um, be palpating. And in this case, I am gonna be palpating in the different cardiac areas, which are the first area is on the, uh, right sternal border and to the second intercostal space is the uh, aortic area and again I'm feeling for pulsations in this case there are no trails notice no hips no lips and that's normal and then I'm gonna go to the second intercostal space to the uh, left sternal notch and again this is a pulmonic area there are no trails no lips noted and then I'm gonna go down to the herbs point which is the third intercostal space. Um, there is no rails and no leaves noted. And then I go down to the fourth intercostal space, which is the tricuspid area. There are no trails, no hips, no leaves noted. And midclavicular line to the fifth intercostal space is a mitral area and there's no trails, no leaves known uh, are noted. And also, um, another important area, I'm sorry, I'm gonna move your hands, is the aura in the abdominal region, and which I can do with pulsation, is uh, measure the width or the aura. In this case, I'm gonna take my ruler back and I'm gonna measure it in centimeters which is by palpation and I, in this case, the Iora measures uh, two centimeters, which is a normal finding anything below three centimeters. And I'm gonna proceed and I'm gonna pop, just palpate the chest and see if there's any abnormalities, any masses which are not noted and the skin is also warm which means there's good circulation now i'm gonna proceed and i'm gonna auscultate in the different areas previously mentioned uh, with auscultation we're gonna check to that it's a regular s1 s2 that there are no abnormal heart sounds like an s3 or an s4 and also we're gonna listen for murmurs murmurs so I'm going to start with my diaphragm and I'm going to go again sec uh, right sternal border to the second intercostal space for the aortic area. And there's regular S1, S2, heart sounds, no extra heart sound, no murmurs. And I'm going to go to the left side, second intercostal space, pulmonic area. S1, S2 are noted, regular, no extra heart sounds, no murmurs. Then go down to the third intercostal space for the air point. In the air point, I'm gonna do a different test. I'm gonna ask you to take a deep breath, please, and then hold it. And then let it out. In the air point, we are able to listen to a regular S1, S2. No extra heart sounds, no murmurs, and upon inspiration and hold deep breath, sometimes we can see the splitting of the S2 heart sound. Um, 
but in this case it's not noted it will be a regular finding if it's noted gonna go down to the four intercostal space to the three cuspid area again listening to a regular is one is two no murmurs are noted and then i'm gonna go mid clavicular line to the fifth intercostal space to the mitral area Again, listening for S1, S2, no extra heart sounds, no murmurs. And now that I'm gonna auscultator, I'm gonna auscultate the abdominal aorta, and it's about two centimeters above the umbilicus. And I listen to the diaphragm for bruits, which are not noted. I'm gonna turn my stethoscope and use the bell for the abdominal aorta. And then it's no bro, it's noted. And I'm gonna listen with my stethoscope to the different areas of the heart just to be sure that I didn't miss any extra sounds. To the aortic area, regular is one is two, no murmurs, no extra heart sounds. Pulmonic area, regular one is S one is two, no extra heart sounds, no murmurs. Down to the earth's point at the third intercostal space. Regular S1, S2, no murmurs are noted. Down to third cuspid area. Regular S1, S2, no murmurs noted. And then down mid clavicular to the fifth intercostal space for the metro area. And then it's regular S1, S2, no murmurs are noted. Okay, uh, so that concludes the auscultation in the chest. Um, the next step of the examination would be to um, listen to the patient's chest while he's slightly tilting forward. Can you just sit down for me? And in the slightly tilting forward, I'm gonna listen to all the areas again. Yes, this is beautiful. And I'm gonna listen with that bell first. Um, the aortic area, and then the pulmonic area, down to Earth's point, and then to the cuspid area. And then the mitral area. And again, listening for uh, any extra heart sounds. And there were no noted, just a regular S1, S2. And then I listen and do the same procedure with the diaphragm of the stethoscope. Aortic area, and then to the left sternal border, pulmonic area. Now to the earth's point. down to the uh, tricuspid area and finally to the mitral area okay thank you for that you can lay back down um there were regular s1 s2 no thrills noted no murmurs were noted um the next step of the uh, exam will be we can proceed to the upper extremities uh, which means that i'm going to cover your chest I'm gonna look at the patient's uh, skin colors, make sure it's symmetrical, and I'm looking to see if there any, it's any like any IVs or any uh, shunts. Of course, the patient does not have any of that. Uh, another thing that I can look for is um, in the fingers, are they clubbing? Is there cyanosis noted to the fingers? And there's none noted. Uh, Next, I can proceed to the palpation. I'm gonna start touching you, and upon touching the extremities, I am feeling for the patient's temperature, which is warmth, and that's normal. It's a good finding for good circulation, and it's bilateral. Uh, next, I can proceed uh, to the capillary refills to both extremities, and they're less than one second. Now I'm going to palpate the radial pulses 
which are three plus bilaterally and I'm doing this at the same time now for the brachial pulses which are three plus bilaterally and equal they're equal okay and now I'm gonna continue go down to the patient's pelvic area in this case um, we're gonna be checking for the femoral pulse. I'm gonna expose you, but in regular life, in normal, in a normal exam, I will be touching this patient's skin for uh, uh, to evaluate the pulse, and I'm all, I will be also placing my uh, stethoscope right on the skin to listen to the femoral pulse as well. So I'm gonna uncover you for a little bit, and. Um, of course, this will be inspecting the skin. In this case, for the purpose of the video, I'm not gonna expose my patient, but if I were to expose and, and evaluate in real life, I will see again, if, are there any uh, abnormal findings like a, a pulsations or is there any bruises? And uh, I will palpate both um, femoral pulses, which will be three plus bilaterally and there were no thrills noted um and i will also also take the femoral artery with both the diaphragm and the bell of the stethoscope and i will be looking for bruits which are not noted and then i will be turning the stethoscope and comparing them as well listening for any bruits which not are not it. I'm gonna cover you, okay? And I'm gonna proceed and I'm gonna evaluate the patient's uh, lower extremities. And the first step, as always, is inspection uh, to see the patient's skin color. Are there any modeling or any variscose veins? any swelling or edema to the lower extremities which none is noted the color is equal bilaterally and appropriate for the patient's race there's no cyanosis noted to the toes no necrosis and it looks symmetrical um, the next thing i can do is palpation and of course i start by palpating to see if the temperature of the patient, which in this case is warm, when that equals good circulation. The next thing I can do is palpate the popliteal. Uh, first, I find the popliteal pulse, which is right about there, and I'm gonna compare it to the other leg at the same time, which are both um, three plus and there are no thrills noted then thank you for that then i'm gonna do the uh tor tibial dorsalis pose and i can do it at the same time and comparing there's they're equal they're symmetrical three plus and no thrills are noted and then is the posterior tibial pulse there it is and then the dorsalis pedis which are three plus and equal there's no thrills noted what's really important in this uh, examination too is evaluating the patient's toes because sometimes patients have very bad circulation to the lower extremity especially the toes and I will be looking for any cyanosis, of course, and any um, lesions. And I will also be doing the capillary refill of the toes, which is uh, less than one second. And that is a normal finding. And I think that would conclude the examination for today. Um, thank you so much. And... See you soon.